Good evening, friends of the creaking door. This is your host to welcome you once again into the inner sanctum. Come on in, and never mind looking back over your shoulder. Whatever it is that's behind you can't be half as bad as what's in front. (laughs) As the man whose throat had just been made the scene of an experiment with a razor while he slept said, I'm going from bed to hers. (laughs) All right. Settle down now. It's coming. And there's nothing you can do about it. Just keep a good hold on yourself. And your wife, if your life insurance paid off. (laughs) Joe Harris. 21, wearing a cheap blue serge suit and a thin top coat, cold and wet on a cold and rainy night, decides to make a change. Kansas City's okay, but there's nothing there for me. I gotta get out. My wardrobe ain't built for a hard winter, so I figure it could be more comfortable on the coast, California. But I ain't paying for rail transportation this year, so I head for the KC Freight Yards. And I pick me out a nice long freight job that happens to have an empty car. And pull the sliding door over. Leaving just a crack for air and finger hole for when we reach the land of oranges. The old boiler up front's got the steam up. And... We're off. Ah, I relax. All I gotta do is let a couple of days slide by and... <laughs> Sunshine. Hey. What? I... I didn't notice nobody else was in the car. Didn't you now, Pally? No. That's too bad. Mm-hmm. He leaned back into the darkness of his corner so I couldn't see him very good. He was a young guy, maybe my age, maybe a couple of years older. My size, too. Same color hair and eyes. Almost close enough to be brothers, but... There was something in his eyes that had never been in mine. I was scared. You know something funny? You look like me. Yeah, I kind of noticed that myself in a... Why? Well, lots of guys look a little like each other. No. I mean... Huh? Nobody looks like me. Well, okay, so I don't. You're trying to. That means you must be one of... One of what? They have ways of changing their appearance. You're one of them. You can't fool me. Look, I don't know what you're talking about. It's no use. You can't fool me. I'll have to punish you. Hey, watch out with that knife. When I cut the resemblance away and find out what you really look like. You're crazy. Stop it. Let go of my hand. I've got to cut you away. No. I cut your arm. Twist it. And the knife is pointing at your heart. Now drop it. No. Or... Nobody's as strong as me. I'll... Stop it. I warn you. Stop it. Oh. Then I got to do this. No. I... <laughs> I told you. I told you. I... I told you. Dead. Hey. No, she's dead. I've got to get out. The door. Slide it open. Put the odd bones. Ah, one of these sliding doors. Why don't they slab them proper? Give me a hand, Charlie. Okay. You locked it. Now I can't get out. I can't get out. So there I was. Locked in with him. In the dark. He was dead, so I wasn't afraid of him. At first. I... I even gave him a going over. His eyes were open, but I... I flopped him over. And I went to his pockets. 
Just a couple of bucks and some small change and his draft card. <laughs> Funny, he was 4F, just like me. His name was Martin Pell. <laughs> That's a laugh, too. Finding out who a guy is after you kill him. Kill him? Yeah. I was a murderer. I just realized it. They'll hang me for that. No. No, it was self-defense, but... But what chance have I got of proving that? Me with a record, too. But... Maybe I can lose that record. Maybe. Yeah. So I switched draft cards with him. And now he's Joe Harris. And I'm Martin Pell. Martin Pell of, that says on his card, of Wisey, Oklahoma. And the hours go by, and I'm there with him locked in a boxcar. And the wheels keep pounding underneath. And he's dead. I... I gotta get out. There's gotta be a way. The door. Shut. I... I gotta think. Think. Hey, wait. We're stopping. Now what? We're stopping. Yeah, he's covered up. Maybe they won't spot him. Anyways, I gotta get out. I'll yell I'll yell and I'll pound on the door. Yeah, that's the way. That's the... Help! Help! Let me out! Let me out! Let me out! Somebody hear me! Somebody! They... They heard me. What's going on? Uh-uh. Catching a ride, bum? Get out of here. Yeah, sure. Sure. You know it's against the law riding a freight? Yeah, yeah, I know. Well, maybe it's a hump you remember. No! Now get out of here. Get fast. Fast as I could, I got away from there. The yard bull took a quick look into the car, but he didn't spot the body under the sacking. And the train started up. And it began moving away. With Martin Pell lying under a pile of dirty sacking. With a knife in his heart. And a funny look in his eyes. Only, I'm Martin Pell now. There was only a watering stop where the train stopped, so I walked across the prairie. Not knowing where I was going and not caring much. Well, I... I keep walking across the dark face of the land until I spot a light. A couple of lights. A small town, it looked like. A small town. Somewhere. Where? Right on the edge of town, there's a lunch wagon, and it's open. And there's a light shining on it, and I'm hungry. So, I go into the lunch wagon. Hi. Uh, how about something to eat, huh? Sure thing, Martin. Sure thing. What? What did you say? I said, sure, you can have something to eat, Martin. What'd it be? Martin? What? What town is this? Why, you ought to know, Martin. This is Wisey. Wisey, Oklahoma. Wisey? But but that's the same place he... It can't be. Oh, that's no way to talk about your own hometown. Of course, you've been away quite a few years. You look good now. Wouldn't you say I, I've changed? Oh, no, Morden's not true. Of course, you're only around 16 when you left. <laughs> kind of an advanced 16, though. Yeah? Hey, many kids that age would have stuck up the bank, knocked off the night watchman. I... I killed him? Oh, don't get modest, fella. Sure. Old man Henshaw. Hey, hey, I was near forgetting. You said you're hungry. Not anymore. Oh, come on. Have something to eat. But don't you believe in putting anything in your stomach before doing a job? Doing a job? Me? Why do you think I sent for him? Why should I promise you a grand? I... I don't remember. Oh, for Pete's sake, Martin. How many men are you killed that you don't remember a job like this? Never mind the act. Play it straight, huh? 
Okay, okay. Don't get nasty. It's uh, too late to talk business anyway. Come on, I got a room fixed up way in back. Get a good night's sleep. We'll talk in the morning. About an old man that's lived way past his time, hmm? And about how you, uh, are going to take care of that. Martin, I sent for you because I need money. I ain't got any. My uncle has. Old man Carew. I'll get it from him. When he dies, I will. So? So I want him to die. Oh. I got a grand in cash. That's yours. For what? For my uncle dying a little earlier than expecting. No dice. No dice. Martin, you take care of old man Carew, so help me. I'll turn you in on that bank, John. Go ahead. Turn me in. I can prove that I... And then I shut up quick. Blitz was watching me with those little pig eyes in his fat face. Sure, I could prove I wasn't Martin Pell. That I'd never been in Wisey, Oklahoma before in my life. Sure. But to do that, I'd have to admit I was Joe Harris. And when they found that corpse in the boxcar with my draft card on him, that'd be fine. A lot of attention the jury had paid to my plea of self-defense. No witnesses and me on the lam and me switching draft cards in panic. Sure, even the hangman had burst out laughing when he slipped a noose around my neck. I shut up quick. Bliss watching me close. And then I said... Okay, Bliss... It's a deal. What's the layout? I'll pull in here. Trees will cover the car in case anybody happens to be out late on the highway. Can't be too careful. Ain't that so, Martin? That's so. It's only a short walk. Let's get going. Oh, uh, here... You better take this. What? Oh. A tire iron. I picked it up in a junkyard. They'll never trace it to me. It's for old man crew. <laughs> they bother you? I ain't used to them. Anymore, huh? <laughs> the house. Old man crew never believed in buying curtains for the windows. There he is, rocking in his chair. Now watch the porch step. It's busted. I guess we knock. It's polite. Yeah. What's it now? Uncle Carew. It's me. Yeah. What you want? Just to come in. I brought a visitor. An old friend of yours. Yeah. Yeah. Set where you like. Set in my rocker. Yeah, nobody sets in it but me. Yeah, who's the man with you? Don't you recognize him? Yeah. Looks like Pell, boy. That's who it is. Martin Pell. Yeah, never was any good. Like you, Bliss. All right, you visited. Gone home now. Kind of cold out. Gives a chance to warm up, huh? Yeah, I don't care what you do. I don't care what you do. off a bit. Go on, Martin. What? He ain't looking this way. Now's the time. I... I ain't gonna... He's an old man. Give me the iron. What do you... Give it to me. Uh, all right, here. Yeah. Uncle. Uncle. Yeah. That'll be that, huh? Pockets. Yeah. Uncle was carrying quite a bit of dough on him. Martin. Here. Huh? Here, take the money. It's your payment. No. I'll put it in your pocket myself. That's very important. When they find you here, knocked out, tripping over that busted porch step. They'll know why you killed old man Carew. What are you talking about? Sure, and knowing you're Reagan Martin, they'll never look for anybody else. 
Now, when they find you on the premises with the old man's dough in your pocket and your fingerprints on the tie iron... No! That's right. <laughs> I was walking up a long flight of stairs with nothing at the top but more stairs and more stairs and my head was hurting. And then I woke up. Woke up lying outside of old man Carew's house with a blood-stained tire iron in my hand. I let go of it. I pulled myself to my feet and then heard cars. They were coming. And there I still was. I had to get away fast. I, I didn't know the country, but I was hunted. And a hunted animal's got an instinct to hide, to run, and to hide from the killers. They didn't find me that day because I fooled them. I didn't try getting out of the county, getting away from the town. Oh, no. That's where they were watching for me. So I stayed put close to town, which fooled them. And also, I had a job to do. Who is it? Martin. Me. What? What are you doing here? I got paid for a killing I didn't do. So I figured maybe I better do a killing now for no pay at all. Stay where you are. No, we're alone here. Uh Uh-uh. I got this knife. No, no. Bliss, you got a pencil? Pencil? Yeah, sure. Then sit down and write a little note about how you killed old man Carew. No. no. I got the knife against your heart. <laughs> sit down and write. All right. All right. Well, Just write. I killed. I killed. My uncle because I wanted his money. Got it? Good. I'd... Got it. Now sign your name pretty. I... I... I signed it. Take that knife away. Sure. After right. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Bliss. Now, I'd better put the knife in your hand like this. Too bad your nerves went back on you. You committed suicide, Mr. Bliss. That's what you did. And now they'll stop looking for me. I hold in and waited until they found Bliss. So the law was called off. There was nobody to look for. So I headed for the water and stopped in the freights because it was cold. And I was heading for sunshine. There was a train getting ready to head for the coast, so I sneaked close to it. On the far side, there was a couple of bulls around, chewing the rag, but they didn't see me. I spotted an open box car, and I climbed in. I got away from the door. The bulls were coming along checking. One of them sounded like the guy that had thrown me off the night before. Ah, This time I didn't care. I was hoping he'd lock the door on me. So I curled up in a corner and waited. Yeah, Mike, that was quite a wreck they had up ahead. Quite a wreck. Held up the line for 24 hours. The freight here had already pulled out when word came into the wreck up ahead, so they backed her right back here and let her stand. But right, she's on her way now. Uh-uh. One of them sliding doors is open. Give me a hand with it. Hey, wait, wait. Wait, if this is the same train... It can't be. This car. If it's the same train. This second would be over there. Let me see. The second. Yeah, it's the second. And under it. I gotta see. Yeah. It's him. Martin (laughs) Pell. And I'm locked in with them. <laughs> Me and Martin. The killers. <laughs> we... <laughs> We're going to the sunshine together. <laughs> and that's how the cops will find us. 
together. <laughs> Him dead. And me. And, and me. <laughs> well, well. Alas for poor Joe who couldn't keep out of boxcars. He was a nice boy, but he couldn't stay put. I guess they'll give him the order of the Rolling Stone. Tombstone. Hmm? And to leave you with a happy parting thought, whenever you hear a freight train whistling in the night, think of Joe and wonder, is he still in it with Martin rattling? Well, friends, it's time once again to close that creaking door. Until next week at the same time, when we'll be back with a little hunk of horror. <laughs> You'll be sure to listen, won't you? Until next week, then. Good night. Pleasant dreams. Inner Sanctum has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.